Are we heading to a dystopian future? Introduction Have you ever wondered if a sci-fi dystopia lurks in the shadows of the future? If you have, this is the time to click the thumbs up button. If you haven't, this is the time to share it with someone who might have. And regardless, if you stick with the series to the end, you'll find out if you need to go full Mad Max prepper or white pill yourself back into your Netflix and chill life. And as a bonus, you'll get a bullshit free synopsis and analysis of the best sci-fi dystopia future novels and films starting in the 19th century and all the way to the 21st and by distilling all these masterworks to their common denominators we will try to discern are we or are we not walking the green mile to the gallows of a dystopian future mind you i'm not going to dwell as academics do on present or past dystopias. I'm talking about the real deal, 1984, Blade Runner, Gattaca, and all the other gloom and doom futures that inflamed the imagination of millions across the world. So, how did this series even come about, you might ask? What made a data analyst and software product manager take on such a project? Well, on a Telegram channel I own, my followers, not of a religious kind, asked me to answer that question exactly. Are we heading to a dystopian future? I guess I shouldn't have been surprised. Most of my followers, including myself, belong to the right of center camp and it is now our turn to fear a takeover by the bad guys in academia, government, and media. I guess the lefty guys, girls, and in-betweens had the same feeling in, say, the 50s. But even if you're on the side of those presumably doing the taking over, you must admit that current events are starting to sound like the Book of Revelation just with better technology. Prophets of doom in lab coats, preacher gowns, and election billboards inform us with frantic urgency of doomsday clocks edging ever closer to midnight. Snap colds, heat waves, storms, floods, pandemics, famine, wars, racism, riots, terrorism, poverty, surveillance, and censorship. It's all fire and brimstone and the end is nigh, and it's the fault of the other guy. YouTube thumbnails and media muppets tell us daily how bad everything has gotten. In fact, they say, it was never worse. We are inundated by headlines about mass immigration and mass unrest, soaring inequality and plummeting wages, shortage of energy and skyrocketing inflation, rising crime and declining empires, collapsing demographics and climbing temperatures. Speaking of which, you can't even complain about the weather anymore without invoking the end of the world. We started with global cooling, switched to global warming, settled on climate change, and graduated to CLIMATE CATASTROPHE! No wonder so many people are wondering if we're heading to a dystopian future. Then again, this isn't exactly a new phenomena. Humans are nothing if not steadfast in announcing the apocalypse is just around a corner to your right. Or left, depending on which side of the aisle you happen to be. Although, to be fair, Having these pronouncements increase as of late isn't surprising. We are, after all, in the age of mass communication on cyber steroids, and all the bandwidth is captured by the extremes. Deranged wokesters and enraged traditionalists erupt with 
volcanic fury from their echo chambers with a pyroclastic avalanche of tweets. Internal divisions are inching towards civil wars as societal contrast is at a spinal tap 11. Each conservative is now an orange Mussolini, and every liberal a non-binary Stalin. Tiki torches carrying manifesto writing white people warn us that a demonic secret society with an unhealthy attraction to children is trying to replace them. And I know I heard that somewhere before. I believe brown shirts were involved. And we all know how that one ended. Oh, and right across the street from the Tiki Torches mob, mostly peaceful rioters are most peacefully burning down cities, looting stores, and tearing down statues. For true social justice, they explain, old ideas, old culture, old customs and old habits must be abolished. And if you don't know what the four olds are, look it up and check the body count and misery associated with it. For a science enthusiast like me, this is an age of utter, devastating disappointment. Perverse motives, groupthink and ideologies that question objective reality have reverted science back to the medieval dogmas that put heretics to the flame. Mathematical models are overfitted to politically sanctioned and corporate funded trend lines. Trend lines that good scientists must not and dare not question. People pretending to be capitalists tell us that we will own nothing and be happy, while others pretending to be socialists, tell us that we are not, in fact, divided by class, but rather by race. Just the other day, I clicked a video promoted by a profit-motivated AI. There, I was informed that an omniscient, omnipresent international cabal is scheming to establish a one-world government, an effort which if indeed is taking place, is going horribly wrong. I mean, in case you haven't noticed, the globalist world order is going down in flames. And from the ashes, the mercantilist powers of old have risen like blackened phoenixes. And this, according to populists, is preferable because it's somehow bad for the rich. Really? Speaking of the rich, a Bond villain parody with an outrageous German accent and a proclivity to Emperor Palpatine cosplay has an annual gathering of self-righteous Malthusian elites bent on bringing a great reset. Apparently 2030 is going to be year zero. And again, feel free to look that one up. Oh, and very authoritatively, they tell me that AI and public-private partnership is the solution to all our ills. Ah, yes. If only government and corporations would finally work together for the greater good. An idea more traditionally known as fascism. But don't you worry. This time it will have some good old socialist internationalism and technocracy sprinkled on top. Apparently, a kleptocratic plutocracy heading a technocracy is good for you. Who knew? Then again, with wealth inequality rising exponentially, a superclass of ruling elites is already calling the shots behind the scenes. And us plebs? are either voting for them directly or by proxy. Oh, and a new fad is brewing in the great minds that consistently crash the economy. Central bank digital currencies, where money itself becomes a means of control and surveillance. 
Not that it really matters. After all, following the lockdowns and mandates, even normies don't need magic glasses to see the obey sign. We're doomed, I tell you. It's all downhill from here. I've seen this in countless post-apocalyptic movies. I've read about it in numerous dystopian novels. People think that communist China is despotic, that tyrannical North Korea is frightening, and that Iran's murderous theocracy is terrifying. Man, wait till you see what's coming. Or maybe we're just catastrophizing. Maybe we are but captives of our pattern-seeking, fear-motivated animal brain cranked up to psychosis by troubled times, forcing us to cherry-pick and connect random dots into a sketch of some hellish future we saw in a movie or read in a book. Then again, maybe as Max Peltier said in the dystopian movie Strange Days, the issue isn't are you paranoid or not, but are you paranoid enough? And so, with that as an intro, I invite you to dive with me into the void of our worst collective fears as told in great novels and films. The premise is simple. The sci-fi author Philip K. Dick once said, If you find this world bad, you should see some of the others. And that's precisely what we'll do. We will use dystopian fiction to discern, are we, or are we not, walking the green mile to the gallows of a dystopian future. The method? First we will take the most influential and or most successful dystopian novels and films, one per decade or so spanning from the end of the 19th century when the last big industrial, technological and cultural revolution reached a crescendo, all the way to just before Trump was elected, because from there on you just all went completely mad. Each chapter will be devoted to a single film or novel, and long chapters will be separated into smaller parts. In each chapter we will review the work, the story, its meaning, and what drove its creator, and distill the dystopian future depicted into bullet points. And in the final chapter we will extract the common denominators and equate them to current societal, socio-political, and technological trends, to tell how close we are to those depicted in the worlds we apparently fear the most. Importantly, since books and films are informed by their times, we will also examine what has changed. Do the warnings still apply? 1984, for instance, was written with the horrific regime of Nazi Germany still fresh in the memories of readers and the horrors of Soviet Russia surfacing for all to see. The Handmaid's Tale was inspired by the resurgence of conservative Christianity in the 80s, and the movie Gattaca came as research papers titled Tailored Genes, IVF, Genetic Engineering and Eugenics were making the rounds in scientific journals, and yes, this is a real title of a real paper. This should give us another yardstick to measure our distance from dystopian futures. After all, if the problems of old have been solved, or are just as bad but yielded no dystopias, we can spot where we are exaggerating. Crucially, I will try to avoid anecdotes that match a specific paragraph in a book or film. This, I've noticed, is what lazy commentators with an agenda tend to do. I will try to keep my agenda out of it, although I admit I have one. But regardless, I promise not to be lazy. 
for me, this has been a lengthy investigation that has enlightened me, black-pilling, red-pilling, and white-pilling me on each turn, and I am confident it will be the same for you. Now, if you stayed this far, I hope you will check the description to find ways to support my work, from buying books on Amazon to PayPaling me, or at least give a like and a share. And with that, remember, don't do to others what is hurtful to you, don't let the bad guys win, and thanks for staying to the end. See you in the next chapter.